My advice to someone who is interested in pursuing their passions is one, shop at Fort Worth Camera, often and regularly. You want me to start that again? That was a good one. You can use that as an outtake at the end. My name is Ted Forbes. I have a YouTube channel and I am a photographer and filmmaker. I do a wide variety of things and uh, <laughs> you're going to have to edit that out. Or you want me to do that again? I got my first camera when I was eight years old. I uh, wanted a camera really bad for some reason, mainly because I would borrow my dad's and waste all of his film and get in trouble. They finally bought me a Kodak 110, which had the little cartridge film. You still see them at the drugstore. It has a little thin layer of dust on the top. And uh, my friend, my best friend had a house. They had a swimming pool in the back. His parents were a little bit on the lazy side and they would just let this pool go every fall. This is a true story, by the way, McKenzie. They would let the pool go when it wasn't summer and it was disgusting. And within probably a month, it would turn into a swamp. And in the spring, we would go fishing in the swimming pool. And then by the summer, they would have the thing drained, cleaned. It seems like it would just be easier to take care of it. So those were my first pictures. I think my first mentor in photography was my dad's best friend, a gentleman named Greg Booth, who was a very successful commercial photographer in Dallas. Didn't really know much about what he did or where he came from. He assisted Arnold Newman in New York in the 70s, and they had several Newman prints in their house. And I very specifically remember looking at those and thinking, I want to make something like that. In terms of inspiration, I think that there's a wealth of resources online, and if I named those names, you'd probably already know most of them and have made up your mind whether you already follow them or not. There's wonderful things online, but I think what inspires me the most is what is not online. I look to photographers from the 60s, uh, Ernst Haas, people like that who, I'm just really into him right now, Saul Leiter, um, people who you go buy a book and it comes in the mail or you get it at the store or your library or go to a museum and see shows. I'm a big fan of the Past Masters. Finding inspiration creatively and the whole means to keep going and stay really turned on about what you're doing I think has been really challenging this last year mainly because we can't see our friends nearly as much and we can't travel but I think that that's actually the silver lining and I have to explain that because sometimes it's just sitting around at home or going for a walk and watching the sunset and making yourself do new things and what happens is when I go do this for about a week I take the same pictures over and over again and then one day I find something that's interesting that's kind of inspiring and it's a new direction it's some place to go it's really important right now because I think it's very difficult and it's really easy to get down about things because we're not able to do the things we used to do but one day we'll return to those and I think it's important to work on your skill set right now and your approach mentally and in terms of what you're doing what you're shooting what your interests are and then let that take to itself to the next level once we get past all this. So people ask what I like to shoot with the most and the truth of the matter is, I mean, I guess I have cameras for my own personal work. If it were up to me, I'd just shoot on old film cameras because they're a lot of fun. But because of what I do, having a YouTube channel and reviewing things, I am in a very fortunate situation where I have access to loaner gear from a lot of companies and so it's kind of my job sometimes to be able to be familiar with Sony, Fujifilm, Canon, Nikon, Hasselblad, you name it. And I think the most interesting thing about that though is I can say there's a common thing between all of these brands and that they're all incredible. If you can't get a good picture on anything modern, I don't think the problem is going to be the camera. My advice to anyone who is serious about pursuing their passion, whatever that may be, is to one, try to find ways to stay inspired, find ways to spend a lot of time because everything's competitive and you want to be at your best. You got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of your talent. You got to take care of what it is that you're doing and you've got to practice that all the time. But I think the most important thing is to start trying to think outside the box because most things are competitive, but there are a lot of opportunities for new things people haven't thought of yet. Does Fort Worth ever cross my mind? All the time. I actually, <laughs> sorry. I, you ask me these things that I'm set up to be corny. Let's be serious. 
I am a big fan of Fort Worth. It crosses my mind constantly. I'm very proud to be from Fort Worth. Whenever I go on press trips for things during a year where we might be traveling, and everybody shows up from Los Angeles or New York or Philadelphia or Chicago, I love it when they ask me where I'm from and I say Fort Worth, Texas, and they have no idea where that is. They think it's a bunch of farms and ranch hands and cowboy hats. And, but I love being from here and I love it because it's a big small town. It's big enough to where there's awesome things to do. We have three of the best art museums in the world right here and I'm really not kidding. We do have three of the best and everything is like pretty much within either walking distance or a short drive and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. I grew up in Dallas. I moved here five years ago and uh, I used to think I would really miss Dallas and sorry Dallas. I I'm Ted Forbes and I am a Fort Worth camera ambassador.